This day, when a searing tragedy struck in a place parents felt their children were safe. The worst grade school shooting in U.S. history, at least 27 dead, 20 children, 7 adults, including the principal. And the gunman killed himself. And all over this town, in churches like the United Methodist Church behind us, well, the lights are on and they are still open for prayer tonight. And they will be all night. People have been gathering here for prayer to lean on each other and lean on a belief in something bigger than themselves to help get through what is just impossible to believe here or anywhere else. The sentiment here echoed in what you're seeing now down by the Washington Monument in D.C. Uh, many members of the Connecticut delegation was there, but this story is really about their home here, Newtown, Connecticut, just 27,000 people. This is a place where people know each other, families know each other. And what happened today is known by all. And it's not just about how many were lost, it's about the age. What is hitting everyone so hard is the reality of these being children that were targeted by a madman. We now know his name. We know he's 20 years old, Adam Lanza. We know that before he came to this school, he shot his own mother, Nancy, in the face, killing her at her home. The looming question is why this man then decided to come to this school. He shows up at a place where they're making gingerbread houses in preparation for the holidays and Christmas presents. Just kids. A man in black enters with a vest and multiple weapons and begins a massacre. It was a clear, crisp, and trouble-free start to the morning at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Kids like Ella Seavers and her mother Amy, Just do the elf dance, but you don't eager for the weekend and the holidays to arrive. It's Christmas time, right? Where are we, Mom, in terms of uh, Christmas planning? Some shopping, cookie making, we decorated our Christmas tree. Ella Christmas list made? Mm hmm Sent to Santa? Yes. Ella's class was preparing to make gingerbread houses. When you first got there? Um, when I first got there, it was like a regular day. But at 9.41 a.m., the children's day and their innocence is shattered. 6-7, Sandy Hook School. Caller's indicating she thinks there's someone shooting in the building. We heard a loud bang, and we thought that something fell. Then we heard another, and then we thought that that was a gunshot. What do you remember? We got to school, we did everything we needed to, and then we heard all this racket. Then we heard them say, go and your cubbies. We thought we had to go because something bad was happening. What did the teacher do then? Um, she read us some books and we talked about things and they played little games in there. And while that was going on, your teacher was reading you books and keeping you calm? Yeah. She just kept her calm and told you a story? She read us the Nutcracker mm. and another book that was about Christmas. Right. How did you find out, Amy? Um, well, we got a phone call from the school saying the schools were in lockdown. Lockdown? I mean, what sense does that make to you as a word for your kids kindergarten through four school? Not very good. Police quickly converge on the school, secure the perimeter, and start a painstaking search for the shooter. The police came in. It's like, is he in here? Then he ran out. That included checking every door, every crack, every crevice, every portion of that school. Our main objective was to evacuate as quickly and efficiently as possible any and all students and faculty in the school. It takes an agonizing hour before it becomes clear just what's taking place inside the school. Next come ominous signs. Ambulances are called, stretchers set up. By 10.30 a.m., police and teachers escort groups of traumatized students out of the school, kids who give the first indications of the terrible scene inside. Kids were crying, not really like screaming, but they felt, they're all huddling together and they're, they got, they got, they felt so sick. We all put our hands on other people's shoulders and then our teacher held the first person's hand and she let us out. Did you keep your eyes closed? Yes. The whole time? Mm-hmm. And when you opened them, where were you? 
We were walking down to the fire station. The children are taken to the fire department where frantic parents swarm, desperate to find out if their kids are safe. It was terrifying. It's, it's, I'm still terrified. I think I'm still in shock about it all. I still don't know everything that happened. You're rushing over here and you can't get to where you need to go and you have to park down here and, and walk. When a son or daughter is found, the relief is immense. I was so happy. I just hugged. What goes through your mind when you see her? Oh my God, this is the best day of my life, the worst day of my life, just gratefulness, yeah, gratefulness. I mean, the tears come to your eyes immediately when you know that your child's okay. But too many families aren't as lucky. Minutes drag by, no answers on what's going on inside the school. As news trickles out, the worst becomes obvious. Not all of the reunions between parent and child will be happy ones. Ooh, I got, uh, here. By 11 a.m., police give the first indications that there are multiple fatalities inside. By 11.50 a.m., they announce most of the fatalities are children. It is almost unimaginable. 27 dead, 20 children. <sighs> News of the second worst shooting in U.S. history smothers the country. I know there's not a parent in America who doesn't feel the same overwhelming grief that I do. The majority of those who died today were children. Uh, beautiful little kids between the ages of five and ten years old. They had their entire lives ahead of them. Birthdays, graduations, weddings, kids of their own. The man responsible for taking these lives, 20-year-old Adam Lanza, shown here in a 2005 photo. Lanza's body found in a classroom after he took his own life. He was armed for war, say authorities, wearing a bulletproof vest and carrying two semi-automatic handguns. A semi-automatic rifle was found in his car. Authorities had originally confused him with his older brother Ryan because he was carrying his brother's ID. Lanza had apparently shot his own mother in the face before doing what we still can't understand, heading to the school. Principal Don Hochsprung, one of those killed, ironically issued a new security alert letter to parents just this fall. Tonight, Newtown residents gather to pray for strength to get over the events that have rocked this small town, as well as the lives of the most innocent among us. Evil visited this community today. Our hearts are broken today. For the parents and grandparents, sisters and brothers of these little children, and for the families of the adults who were lost. Our hearts are broken for the parents of the survivors as well. For as blessed as they are to have their children home tonight, they know that their children's innocence has been torn away from them too early. It's not real because it's not here. It doesn't happen here. And you know what? The six degrees of separation, we know those families. There will be families and friends that we know. You know some people got hurt, right? Yes. And you know that it's over? Um, I didn't know when it was over, and I, I, I probably would have never known when it was over. Well, it's over, okay? <laughs> you know that now? Yes. And what happened there today happened and it's over, okay? And you have to be happy that you're okay. Now, of course, for the Seavers, so much of why they wanted to come forward is because they feel for the families who are not as lucky as they were to get Ella to come home. And while it is over for that little girl and her family, it's not for their reach into the community, and this is gonna be with them for a very long time. They share in that grief, I know that they do. And I think over the next few days, we know we're going to be hearing so many more stories of courage from little children and also from these teachers who held hands and prayed with the children and tried to keep the tragedy from becoming even worse. And I spent the day this afternoon, I spent some time with one young woman who wanted us to know what all the teachers do in that school, how much they care about their children. As she told her story, she is first grade teacher, Caitlin Roig, who's taught at Sandy Hook for six years and she suppressed her own fear to make Make sure her students 
believed that they were going to have a Christmas, they were going to have a Hanukkah, and they would come through this together. It was 9.35 in the morning when 29-year-old Caitlin Roy began her morning class. When it happened, it was during our morning meeting, and literally right in the middle of that was when it started. What started? It's, what did you hear? The, the shooting in the first classroom. And did you know it was shooting? I knew it was shooting immediately. It was just repetitive sounds? Yeah, just it sounded like a, um, the type of gun that just shoots over and over and over again. Um, and so I heard that and I knew immediately that something was obviously very wrong. Um, and I got up and I closed our door. It wasn't locked, but I closed it. And I just told all of our students that we had to get in the bathroom. It was, it was all I could think of. I, I knew we had to be hidden. And how and many so, children? Um, we, I have 16 students. One was absent today, so 15. 15 frightened first graders, one cramped place to hide. And so, and so you got them in the bathroom? It's probably three feet by two feet. It's very small. I picked some of them up and put them on top of the toilet. I put one of, one of my students on top of the um, toilet. Just I just knew we had to get in there. And are you layered on top of each We were other? all, yeah, we were all um, very, very close. Did they cry? No, if they started crying, I would like take their face and say, it's gonna be okay, show me your smile. Like I really tried to like, ha you know, and one of my students was, you know, would say like things like, I know karate, so it's okay, I'll lead the way out. Like really trying to be courageous and try to take over, and, you know, and so obviously I said, okay, well, we really need to just, we need to stay here right now. We just need to be calm and still and quiet. So even in the first grade, they knew. We were right there. I mean, we're the first room, so we heard it so clearly. You know, they knew something was obviously very wrong. Many members of the emergency service units uh, from this town and the surrounding towns. So Did you tell them to be quiet? Did you oh, yes. worry about one of them? No, I told them. I told them to be quiet. I told them we had to be absolutely quiet um, because I was just so afraid that if he did come in and then he would hear us and then he would maybe just start shooting the door. So I said, no, we just have to be absolutely quiet. Um, and we have. I said, there are bad guys out there now. We need to wait for the good guy. As their teacher, I want, I'm their protector. I'm the one who's always there to help them, um, usually with schoolwork. So for me to have to listen to them say things like, you know, I just want to go home and have Christmas. And, you know, I was just trying to tell them, you will, you will, you, we're going to be okay, but we have to be positive. We have to think positive. They really said to you, we want to go home for Christmas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or I just want to hug my mom. Or just, you know, things like that that were just... It's heartbreaking, you know, and like in my mind, I mean, because you're hearing I've never been a part of something obviously anywhere near this traumatic. Um, and so I'm hearing the gunfire in the hallway and I'm thinking in my mind, I, I'm the first classroom. Why isn't he coming? You know, I'm thinking we're next. And, you know, and in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, as as a six year old, seven year old, what are you what are your thoughts? What are your you know, and I'm, I'm thinking that I have to to almost be their parent. Like, I have to tell them, you know. So I said to them, I said, I need you to know that I love you all very much and that it's going to be okay because I thought that was the last thing they were ever going to hear. I thought we were all going to die. Um, you know, and I don't know if that's okay, you know, teachers and, you know, but I wanted them to know someone loved them and I wanted them that to be one of the last things they heard. Uh, not, not the gunfire in the hallway. Uh, it's just horrible horrible. I just wanted my kids and me to live. Like, that's all. I'm not a hero. Like, I was just thinking, where can we go? And it happened to be the bathroom, you know? I just, I wanted us to be okay. And I'm so, so saddened that there are people who, who in this situation are not okay. Um, and my heart, my heart goes out to anyone who knew them and was a part of their lives. I, can't, I just can't imagine. How did you know you were going to be okay? What finally happened was the gunfire stopped. The police came and started knocking. Um, and obviously, I mean, I was completely beside myself. And I said, I don't, I don't believe you. Um, you need to put your badges under the door. Um, so they put their badges under the door. Uh, and in my mind, I'm like, this doesn't really look like a real badge. You, um, you didn't believe the badges. Right. So. so I said, if you're really a police officer, then you would have a way to get in here. You would have a key, or you would have gotten it from the janitor. If everything's OK now, you would have found the keys. So he had the keys, and he found the right one, and he unlocked the door. Down the hill from the school, dozens of parents gathered at the firehouse, waiting to find out if their children had survived. What did you say to your children as you're walking to that firehouse? We're OK. We're OK. It's going to be OK. Do you wonder who did this? Absolutely. And why? 
why? You know? They're innocent children. And again, Chris, she wanted to say that she knows every single teacher in that school was doing what she was doing for the children that they love. And yet, she raises the question at the end, why? Why did this teacher have to be put in this position? Why did these kids have to be put in this position? And of course, it brings us to the person in this story who deserves attention the least in many ways, the gunman, Adam Lanza. And yet, we do look to who he is. We do try to understand why this happened. Hopefully, it will be a window into some type of understanding of how to not make this happen again.